On June 13th, Full Circle Farm was evicted from its illegal foreclosure fight and organic community garden. The rightful owner, David Tat Chow, and his roommates are now homeless and were hoping for the best from a meeting called with the Sacramento County Recorder on June 22nd. For more background on our situation, please check out SaveFullCircleFarm.org. So what happened in the uh, meeting just now? Okay, well basically we found out from the recorder's office that the uh, stamp that was put on there that says this is a stamp for accommodation only was put on either by the bank or whoever did it for the bank in order to make sure that they didn't have any culpability and they weren't, they weren't you know, saying that that was a real title. All they were saying is that they were filing that as an accommodation, okay? Now, what's happened is we found out that we, at the recorder's office, recorder's office is basically just uh, a library, okay? As long as you can, anybody can file anything with the recorder's office on anybody's property, as long as it's, you've got the required things for that to be able to file it. So that means that Basically, then they're, they're not accountable or culpable for any of the actions. All they're doing is filing the document, documents. So that means that the, the title company, Chicago Title Company, that issued the clean title, that's fraud. You know, they didn't keep. So now they're culpable. So in actuality, Vasquez, if he was really not a crook and criminal himself. He could go back to the title company and say, hey, I want my money back because you said there was nothing on this property and now we find out that there is, okay? And he could have worked with us and he could have taken the money that Tat offered him. Tat offered him money. So that means that, you know, that's that wasn't even <laughs> what he was he's about, you know what I mean? So now we're in a situation where we're going to have to go to the... We're going to have to file those fraud charges with the district attorney's office against the bank and against him and against Chicago Title. And uh, we'll have to amend our, get our suit amended to include him and Chicago Title in, in a conspiracy to steal a property. So that's really where we are. Wow. So the county's pretty much just saying like, oh, we're just doing our job. Yeah, that's and, all. Yeah, they're just doing really their job. To all the laws. We don't have to <laughs> so now we see why all this that's going on is because, you know, it's like I said before, it's not, you know, yeah, the banks are doing this stuff, but it's really our government and the officials and the, and the, and the law that are enforcing, you know, allowing, facilitating, facilitating it, yeah, behavior. because it's just like when we went down for the unlawful detainer, they can't hear any of this stuff about the, and that, that doesn't concern them. <laughs> All they're interested in is the paperwork, which they presented to the recorder's office, <laughs> and they're taking that as the gospel. <laughs> this is the gospel. These people come with us with this paperwork, and because the recorder recorded it, it's, that's what it is. You know, so that means the bank is, that's why they're getting away with it, because they don't have to prove anything. See, in the court, when we get, if we can get them into the uh, into this regular court, where they're going to have to come up with the documentation to show that they actually should have been there. So now, um, what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to go to the uh, district attorney and use the district attorney to stop them from being able to, you know, sell the property or even do anything else to the property until after this is caught. Because if, in fact, which we know the bank committed fraud, then his deed is, invo is invalid. Mm -hmm. So that means that it will automatically transfer back to tax. So that's where we're at, and yeah. that's probably what we need to do. I think we'll probably get further making a district attorney do their stuff, yeah. you know, while we do the superior court case 
against the bank and mm -hmm. everything, and that'll be for damages. Mm -hmm. But if we can prove fraud, have the, can have the district attorney's office investigate and prove fraud, then they'll go after them mm -hmm. for criminal charges, mm -hmm. and we'll get the property. And then we'll also that'll give us the grounds too for the for the civil suit mm -hmm. and for damages. Mm -hmm. So that's pretty much where we are right now. And what kind of timeline possibilities do you think there are on some of these routes? So? Well, um, we'll see what happens with the district attorney yeah. because you know it depends on it really depends on them if yeah, they do yeah. on fast. But uh, we have the guess next week we have to put in um, mm -hmm. we're going to have to uh, file and amend our case. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you, Ray. All right. Mr. Vasquez and crew, thank you for not letting most of our plants and animals die. But please stop ripping up and remodeling the farm like you've lived there your whole life. Looks like you've made your choices. Have fun being on the wrong side of our lawsuit against U.S. Bank.